Well, friends, welcome to Daily Devotions. Uh, we're in Acts 27 right through to 28.10. And in a moment or two, I'll just give you a moment to actually read through that. It's a big, bit of a big block. Um, but the question I want to ask today is how do you prepare for the storms of life? How do you prepare for the storms of life? Well, as we have that in the back of our minds, a bit of context to get us up to speed. Paul has been facing calamity and chaos from humans, from his own brothers, the Jews and others. Uh, and it's because he's been proclaiming Jesus. He's faced riots and threats of uh, beatings and beatings uh, and courts after courts, stonings, uh, threats uh, and insults. And he defends himself in the previous chapter saying that I've just been speaking what God has been telling people for years. He's special people, that Jesus is the king. He turned and repent and followed Jesus. And that Jesus, in, in particularly in verse 27, he hasn't been doing this in the corner. It's there for everyone to see. Now, calamity and chaos follow again in this block, where, uh, where Paul now faces natural storms. Not just metaphoric, absolute hurricane, disaster and danger. As they set sail to Rome to hear his case, the center or the ends of the earth, the center of the Roman Empire. And he appears to be this superhero-esque sort of Paul. And yet he's Paul, he's weak, and he constantly points us to Jesus, the hope that is in God, because he's met Jesus, and he can't help but speak and teach about him. Paul has clearly prepared for the storm of life as he's clung to Jesus. And so as we keep that into the big, uh, big picture of our heads, how do we prepare for the storms of life? Uh, I want to give you a moment or two just to have a read of chapter 27 right through to Acts 28 verse 10. And then we're going to talk about a couple of things. Well, hope you, hopefully your eyes are scanned over the mission and message uh, of Jesus and that it's going to reach the ends of the earth as it fulfills Acts 1 verse 8. The Jewish, it would start at the center of Judaism and enter into the center of the Roman Empire. Now, you would have captured the danger language littered all the way through this passage. They've set sail, heading to Rome. They've been quite urgent because it appears to be the end of autumn and so the weather is just chaotic. And then we hear in verse 10, as the weather sort of picks up and there's this craziness that goes around, uh, Paul arcs up to Julius uh, the centurion and says, hey, probably a bad idea. We don't want to lose our life. This storm's pretty bad. Sure enough, what proceeds next is absolute disaster. In verse 20, we see that, uh, that they finally gave up all hope of being saved. This absolute disaster, hurricane-type storms, it appears to be quite violent in this vivid detail captured in this chapter in a bit. Verse 21, Paul arcs up in not necessarily a comedic line, but says, I told you so. <laughs> we shouldn't have done it. And then we read this good news. This good news that seems to calm the storm in their hearts as they, uh, as they prepare for... What's next? And he reads this from, he says this, But I now urge you to keep your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of, the, an angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep your courage, men. For I have faith in God, that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. Now, it sounds really interesting here. Uh, Paul has standing strong on Jesus, on God's word. And yet he does not have all the details at all. You know, at first reading, I thought, there's so many times that I think the details of calamity or opposition that I'm facing personally feels too big for God to handle. And I know what that sounds like, <laughs> but I wonder if that's true for you. The opposition sounds 
See, it looks right there. This calamity, whatever it would be. And the details, the wanderings of our mind make it that much harder to trust God, even when His plans and purposes and character are seen so evidently in the Bible, in history, in our own lifetime. It's a bit of a check for us. Some Bible commentators um, have said that this little pattern of warning, disaster and good news is the pattern of the gospel. Uh, well, Jesus comes and God throughout prophets and long ago through the Old Testament warned and warned and warned. Disaster arose, sin, everyone was mad and sad and abrasive to God and others. And yet in God's kindness and his mercy, he still offers good news, hope, salvation. Other commentators have said that the people, the passengers on this boat have actually depicted the elite uh, political, ec economic uh, and military, as well as uh, the, the king navigators of the sea. And they actually represent the people of the world. Uh, the people of the world who, who can't bypass, no matter what the skill or gifts that they have, can't bypass the threat of being judged by God, i.e. represented by the sea. Except for God's word and instruction, represented by Paul and his words. Now, whatever position that you take, it's very, very clear that God intervenes again. His promise is fulfilled. And 276, exactly and precisely, are all saved. Uh, to the point where he says, in verse uh, 34, I urge you to take some food. You need to, to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. And he broke bread and gave thanks in the midst of this absolute storm. Now, it wasn't quite clear that everyone listened and obeyed. Other people thought, yeah, God's instructions are one thing. I think there's another way to be free. I think you resonate with that. Or perhaps have seen and witnessed other ways to be rescued outside of God's love. Or maybe a little subtle change here and there in, in, in the things that you might listen to from God's word and things that you might try and avoid. They hit a sandbar and another uh, opportunity for them to die, God's people die, or Paul for die, uh, um, Julius actually rescues them and says, hey, no one's going to die. No one's going to be killed. The soldiers aren't going to touch you. Paul again uh, gets bitten by a snake. <laughs> and again, God intervenes and he does not die. Uh, maybe a throwback to Luke uh, 10, 19, uh, as Jesus says, I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over the enemy. And nothing's going to harm you. Maybe. But we see time and time again, the message and mission of the Lord Jesus, the gospel, will continue. Nothing will stop it. And that's what's been really helpful as we've seen the way in which Paul prepares for the storms of life. That he simply says uh, in, uh, in verse 25, that I have faith in God. It's very childlike in some ways, despite the crazy chaos around him. And we see the fulfillment of Acts 1 8, where the center of Jerusalem, of Judaism, is where uh, Jesus' message starts. And Acts 1 8 blows it right out to the ends of the earth, the Roman Empire, the absolute enemy, where it would be released from. You know, we started uh, this devotion thinking about um, how do you prepare for the storms of life? And many of us will have various wisdom around that. In fact, I would love to hear uh, from young and old of how do we do that? Because we need each other as we prepare for the storms of life. When Jesus says, pick up, my cro pick up your cross and follow me, it's not a, a wonderful throwaway statement or Bible memory verse to, to be a cross. But the implications of that are quite severe both for now and the hope for eternity. And it's that hope that prepares us for the storms of life. And so Paul, although he appears to be superhuman in many ways, he had the same hope, the same hope in Jesus because he's met the one who has rescued him, the one who has saved him, the one whom he cannot deny. Uh, there's some questions that I want to fire across um, Things that have exposed my heart, and I'll warn you that if you dive into 
uh, these questions. It will expose your motives and your heart, and it can be pretty ugly. And yet it will always bring you to repentance and trusting Jesus. And the preparation starts now. So here are some questions. How do we cope in chaos? Where do you look in times of change or crisis? Who can be trusted when life falls apart? And can anything really frustrate the purposes or promises of God that we see in the Bible? Now, some of those questions might be helpful, some may not. But I do pray it will be an opportunity for you to prepare now for the storms of life. Because this life has an incredible hope. But that hope does come at a cost as we see Jesus doing the exact same. There's this uh, a wonderful um, line that, uh, that John Newton um, has been quoted. And I think it's, I believe it's from um, sometime in 1748 as his ship goes astray. Um, as he's carrying this slave boat, captaining this slave boat. Tragic circumstances, both the crash, but also history, human history in itself. Uh, And he says this, and I hope this is my prayer for for all of us, and for my own heart too. He says, through many trials, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will bring me home. Please know that I'll be praying for you as you follow Jesus, Uh, as you know him, and for those who don't know him, I pray would you ask Jesus to reveal himself to you, because he longs to do that. He really does. That's why we do these things. That's why we talk about Jesus all the time, because he really does save people. Well, you might be wondering, uh, as we enter, as we sort of finish up in this wonderful book of Acts, you might be wondering what our plans are for daily devotions, and, and we've as a staff team, just been so privileged to spend time with you and to walk with you. Uh, And so we're going to continue daily devotions after a two-week break for school holidays. And it's our plan in term three uh, to start transitioning away from staff-led daily devotions uh, so that we can all feel equipped to read the Bible, continue reading God's incredible word, either in our families or by ourselves. Now, more details will come Uh, in the coming weeks but we're really excited about this and in the meantime we're going to be praying for you as followers of Jesus that you would grow wherever you open up God's word whether it's at home or wherever you're listening to right now so um, friends brothers and sisters uh, we pray that you'll be built up and we cannot wait to see you soon for more daily devotions